Welcome to this presentation. I am Esme Lowe, researcher at the Department of Horticultural Science, Stellenbosch University. In this presentation, I will attempt to summarize a seven year long project in five minutes. The project started in 2013 and the final report will be submitted to Wardgrow in the coming month. The project deals with three physiological aspects of dormancy in apple buds exposed to insufficient cold. On each of the following slides you will see an icon in the bottom right hand corner. If you click on this, an audio recording will start to talk you through the presentation. Bud dormancy refers to the rest period plants undergo during unfavorable winter temperatures. It is defined as the absence of visible growth in any plant part containing a meristem. We do however know that although no changes are visible during dormancy, the bud does undergo certain physiological changes based on the temperature of the environment. Deciduous trees need a certain amount of chill, referred to as the chill requirement, to enable synchronized bud break in the following spring. If the winter period is not cold enough and the chill requirement not met, the bud's physiology built will Crips pink terminal buds were used as our study material. These buds were collected in the climatically contrasting warm Algen area versus the colder Kohlbuchefeld region. Buds were cut bi-weekly from three different orchards in each of the areas to collect data during the winter period. Some buds were used to determine the dormancy level of the trees and others to perform biochemical analysis to determine abscisic acid concentration, respiration levels and lipid composition. A separate experiment was conducted to investigate the effect of rest breaking agent on the buds by covering some of the buds in plastic bags during the commercial rest breaking application, as indicated in the photos. This slide provides information on the biochemical methods used during the analysis of the respiration pathways, lipid composition and abscisic acid concentration. Due to time constraints I will not discuss these methods in detail but rather focus on some of the details and results obtained during the respiration analysis. All the results will however be available in the final Ward Crow technical report as well as a PhD thesis completed by Micheline Inamahuru under the supervision of myself and Professor Vian Stein. 
as promised, let's look at some of the respiration results. On the left hand side, we have a graph depicting the total respiration rate of the buds from the contrasting areas. The dotted line indicate the respiration of buds from the colder Coeboccafeld area and shows what is typically expected from buds that received sufficient winter chill. If you follow the dotted line, you will see that the respiration rate decreases during the winter. And then, in mid-July, the respiration increases sharply as the chill requirement is possibly met and the buds are starting to prepare for growth resumption. There is a rapid return in growth potential as the respiration rate increases drastically and is providing the much needed energy required for growth resumption. The solid line indicates the respiration of the buds from the warm winter area. Although the respiration rate also declines during winter, it never reaches the same low level seen in the Coeboccafeld buds. The increase in respiration rate now occurs earlier but at a slower rate and never reaches the high level seen in the Coeboccafeld buds. This possibly shows that the buds with insufficient winter chill do not provide the same amount of energy through respiration and therefore struggle to resume growth in spring. On the right hand side we are looking at a similar graph. Now the dotted line indicates the respiration from buds that received a rest breaking agent treatment versus the solid line depicting buds from a warm winter area with no rest breaking agent treatment. The time of rest breaking agent application is indicated by the black arrow. From this it is clear that the buds from the rest breaking treatment undergo a faster increase in their respiration rate compared to buds that received insufficient chill. The rest breaking agent thus causes a reaction very similar to what was seen in the buds from the Coeboccafeld area, the graph on your left meaning that the rest breaking agent operates on a similar physio physiological mechanism as what winter cold does. Similar fascinating results were seen when the different respiration pathways were investigated separately, all indicating a stark contrast in the respiration of buds that fail to accumulate sufficient winter chill. In conclusion, upon investigation of the respiration rate, lipid composition and abscisic acid concentration, buds that lack sufficient winter chill behave differently compared to buds of which the chill requirement is met. For the respiration analysis, the individual respiration pathways behaves differently as spring approached and interestingly, when buds from warm winter areas were treated with a rest breaking agent, the respiration rate returned to what was found in buds that received sufficient chill. The lipid composition in buds from warm winter areas were found to be less fluid and more saturated. Again, the application of rest breaking agent changed this back to a pattern similar to what is seen in buds with sufficient chill. The concentration of abscisic acid was found to be higher in buds from warm winter areas as well as a reduced metabolism. As ABA has growth limiting capabilities, its high levels in warm winter areas assists in explaining the lack of bud break and growth resumption experienced in these areas. But why is all of this research important to a fruit producer you may ask? A good understanding of the physiological intricacies within a bud provides a researcher with a targeted approach when looking and searching for new rest breaking agents. We all know that dormix applications may be limiting in the future. A targeted approach to a researcher is like hunting with a sniper rifle versus a shotgun. I would like to acknowledge Hortgrove Science as the funder of this research. I'm grateful to the producers and the participants mentioned on this slide. Without their continuous support, this project would not have been possible. 
feel free to contact me should you require more information. Thank you.